Now let's cover some of the lymphoid tissues and organs. First of all, we have the spleen, which is the largest lymphoid organ in your body. Um, it sits in your left upper quadrant of your abdominal pelvic cavity next to your stomach. The internal components of the spleen consist of reticular fibers that are coming from the reticular cells that we've previously mentioned. And these reticular fibers are still really good for trapping um, foreign matter, bacteria, debris, anything like that, which is a main function of the spleen. But in addition to that, your spleen also is a site for lymphocyte proliferation when your immune system has kicked into high gear. Your spleen recycles uh, old red blood cells and it can store the parts of those recycled red blood cells for later, as well as store platelets um, for when we need extra ones of those. Yeah, okay. Um, this is your good old spleen, okay, right next to your stomach as promised. Um, it's a little hard to tell just by the histological picture, but just kind of imagine blood coming from these vessels traveling through this web of tissue and all those reticular fibers catching viruses and bacteria best it can um, before we send the blood back out the veins. Now next we have the thymus um, which is superior to your mediastinum. You have two lobes to your thymus, left lobe, right lobe. Um, your thymus does not capture and trap pathogens like many of your other lymphoid tissues that we've mentioned. It does, however, secrete thymosin. This is a hormone that is responsible for helping um, T cells uh, or those T lymphocytes mature into fully functional cells. Um, as you get older, your thymus gets smaller. So when you are a tiny, tiny little baby, when you're an infant and a small child, your thymus is very large. Um, maximum size is um, when you're about 12 to 14 years old. And from there, it's just kind of downhill. Your thymus then starts to atrophy or gets smaller and the uh, glandular tissue turns into fat instead. Um, as the atrophy occurs, T cell production and maturation also declines. So by the time you hit um, retirement age, about 65, T cell production falls to about 2% of what it used to be. Okay? The idea is that by the time you hit um, about 65-ish, your immune system is pretty well established and so there's really not as much of a need to continue high T cell production but when you are very small and very young when you are that infant and that young child your immune system is just getting going and so we really want to build that up as quickly as we can over the first decade or so. This is what your good old thymus looks like. As promised, we have a right and a left lobe. You can already see some adipose, some of the yellow tissue coming in and replacing the glandular tissue instead. It is superior to the mediastinum, which remember encases your lungs and your heart and your great vessels. Don't confuse your little old thymus with your little old thyroid gland. Okay, so these both are glandular tissue. They do both have a left and a right lobe. However, your thyroid sits much higher up. Okay, and again, your thymus sits much closer to your heart. All right, then we have your malt, your mucosa associated lymphatic tissue. This is not exactly an organ, it's really just clusters of lymphoid tissue that helps protect mucous membranes specifically. Um, you find these in places like your oral and your nasal cavity, as well as your GI tract, your respiratory tract, and part of your genitourinary tract. So kind of envision you taking in air or other substances through your nose or your mouth. We're going to want to filter those. Um, we're going to want to trap and get rid of any kind of foreign pathogens that we might come across sooner rather than later. So you know, your, your nose and your mouth, pretty good place to inhale things, to eat and drink things, stuff like that. Um, anything that doesn't get caught in your oral your nasal cavities hopefully will then get caught in your GI tract or your respiratory tract before 
it ends up in your blood. Same thing with your genitourinary tract. So we tend to think, um, so like your urethra, for example, we tend to think of that as an exit for urine. Okay, um, and that's true, but it could be an entrance for bacteria that could cause an infection. And so again, we see this malt um, tissue in these places that could be an entrance or an exit for us, but it could be the opposite for a pathogen. So what we would consider to be used as an exit could be an entrance for them and vice versa. Now, much of the malt in the body, um, we said they're not exactly organs, they're really just clusters of tissue. And you find a lot of B cells and T cells here, but you're not going to find that capsule that we mentioned when we talked about um, lymph nodes themselves. Now, you do find uh, malt clusters in a few specific locations, and some of these you've heard of, and one maybe not quite so much. Your tonsils and your appendix are probably somewhat familiar to you. Um, you may or may not have had one or both of these removed, or perhaps maybe know somebody who's had some of these organs removed. Your tonsils are located in both your oral and your nasal cavities. You do have three different sets of tonsils. Um, the idea is that they are removing microbes and other foreign things that you have either inhaled or ingested. Your appendix lives in your um, large intestine, um, and it also is designed to help capture and destroy pathogens before they continue moving down your large intestine, or hopefully they wouldn't try to move backwards into your small intestine, okay? Um, and again, the tonsils and the appendix, many people either have to have them removed um, or, um, you know, are susceptible to chronic infections and things like that. Now, Pater's patches you may not be quite as familiar with. Um, your payers patches are located in the last portion of your small intestine, which we call your ileum. Um, the idea is still very similar though. We are trying to capture macro, uh, well, our macrophages are trying to capture and destroy bacteria before they can either penetrate into the intestinal wall and get into the blood, or we're trying to trap them before they can move into the large intestine, okay, which again, then they could end up uh, in the blood as well. So we've just got several places along the body where we're trying to capture and destroy bacteria and viruses, anything else that's trying to cause us problems. Here are your three um, tonsils that I've mentioned. You've got your pharyngeal tonsils. Sometimes these are referred to as adenoids. So um, I've actually had my tonsils and adenoids removed. So this is what they were called when, uh, when I was younger. Uh, your pharyngeal ones, your pharynx, or the back kind of part of your throat, you can see your uh, pharyngeal tonsils up here. Then you've got your palatine tonsils and your lingual tonsils. So your lingual tonsils are a little um, closer to the back of your tongue. So lingual is tongue. Palatine um, would refer to more of the roof of your mouth. And so you find those back there. Now, your payers patches, we said those were going to be found um, right here in your small intestine. Okay, where we're going to get ready to dump into your large intestine. Okay, and then your little itty bitty tea, tiny appendix is right there. Okay, all right. Now, sometimes things can go wrong. I know that's going to shock you at this point, but it's still true. Um, your lymphatic system, remember, one of the main functions is regulation of volume of your interstitial fluid. And sometimes that kind of gets overlooked until something really does go wrong. So if your lymphatic system is not working as it should for whatever reason, you are probably going to start suffering from lymphedema, um, which you can see in this patient here. Her right arm is severely swollen compared to her left. And it's not, this is not fat, Okay, this is not her working out, this is fluid, okay? Typically, this is due to the removal of lymphatic vessels during surgery, or your vessels have become blocked by certain pathogens, um, particularly certain parasites like to live in your um, lymphatic vessels. 
um, if we are either removing the vessels or blocking them, however we're rendering them useless, we are preventing the transport of that interstitial fluid back into your cardiovascular system. So it's going to stay in the tissues where we don't necessarily want it. Not only is this uncomfortable um, and possibly unsightly, but remember, if we're not putting that fluid back into the blood where it belongs, now you could be affecting um, your blood pressure by affecting your blood volume. Um, elephantiasis, um, the end result is similar. You've got the severe edema. Um, this one is just caused by a parasite um, that blocks the lymphatic system instead of the removal um, like in the previous slide. So different causes, same result. And that covers the lymphatic system.